Okay, so we saw how we can work with a single image to fix problem areas like cloud shadows and clouds. Um, but we can also work with multiple images. Here we have the same image that we were working with previously. We also have another image which was collected April 24th and then another image collected about one year later in March 10th, 2015. So you can see that each one of those images has some areas that maybe we'll want to use a portion of each one of those images. So the first thing we'll do is we'll pull up our Smart Geofill panel once again and instead of using the output source which essentially just works with the topmost layer that's selected at the time I'll set it to project file set and now when I create an area of interest so I'll create an area of interest over this large area that has clouds and you can see that immediately what happened is it gave me an option for the layer that's immediately underneath it so I can actually toggle between that layer and the other layer as well which is available over March from March 10th, 2015. Now obviously that image is full of clouds and we don't want to use it. So we'll go back to the previous layer. And uh, so this is a nice way to work. We can essentially just toggle between the different layers and choose the one that fits best within this particular area of interest. Now, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of other cloud down here. So I can very easily reshape my area of interest. So I'm actually going to try to grab as much of all of this as possible can see there's clouds all through here and I'm just roughly creating a polygon to uh, capture the uh, area of interest so there you go so just like that I've copied the other portion of the image into the final image now I still don't like the color balancing as you can see it looks a little bit too bright so let me turn the brightness down and I can toggle that layer on and off to be able to see with the uh, the blending area along the selection area that I created and I can of course control the blend so here I can increase the blend and you can see that interactively as I go up and down so that looks pretty good and let's just take a look once again it's pretty much invisible this is where we blend it in the water and if I want to see what the original image looked like before that's what it looked like before and if I want to see the uh, image that I'm clipping from. That's the image I'm clipping from. So I'll turn the layer back on there. You can see it. And you can see the blend width that's interactively displayed there. So if I, if I increase this to 500 and I put the blend width, you can see that that's now how far out it's going to blend in with the, uh, with the other image. So that gives you a good idea of how it works. Again, once I'm happy with it, I simply go paste. So it does take a moment depending on the size of the area that you're working with. Uh, in this case, this is uh, roughly one third of a Landsat image. So it is quite a large area. And there you go, that's it. The pasting is done. So now the bottom portion of the image is cloud free and the top portion is uh, looking pretty good as well. So just a few other points of note on the multiple images in the same project. We can actually control how many channels are going to be uh, used from the input and the output. So in this case, every single uh, portion of the image that I selected that didn't have clouds has been pasted into the one that did have clouds. So here's, here's where we control that. Now if we only wanted to do that to, uh, let's say, the uh, the first channels then we would basically just remove that so we would maybe do three channels we wanted to do the only the visible bands so we would choose blue uh, green and red and then here similarly we would choose blue green and red so you can see here that the channels are mapped and I've restricted it to only three particular channels so if I was only making changes to the visible bands that's how I would do it. If I only wanted to make changes to the near infrared, that's how I would uh, change the settings uh, and so on. So, so that, that's just to uh, control the copying and pasting. Now when I did hit paste and I hit save, it did change all of the channels. So let me just show you that. So in the previous scenario what I did is I took a portion of the April 24th image, all of the channels, and I pasted them into the March 23rd image. So as you can see, when I load up one of the other channels that wasn't being used in the interactive pasting operation, uh, you will see that it has been pasted in from the 24th image. So you can see here that the infrared channel is perfectly cloud-free as well, uh, same as all the other channels. All the channels have been adjusted to uh, paste in the portion that was cloud-free. So you can see that the, the shortwave infrared bands and the 
and the near infrared band has been pasted in as well.